All right, getting into the end of chapter 8 and the beginning of chapter 9 are going to blend together a little bit here. Um, and we start talking about, we start analyzing the bonds. So how many sigma and pi bonds are in this structure? I'm going to draw this out very painfully um, so we can look at all the single bonds that are here because the hydrogens can only have one bond on them. So this is a collapsed version of a Lewis structure. Let me, let me show you what it looks like here. Okay, that carbon that goes first has a double bond to another carbon, and then there are two hydrogens on it. So that's how we start to read that. And then that carbon is connected to another carbon, and it has one hydrogen on it. So um, that carbon is connected to another carbon, which is connected to another carbon that has the CH3. So all the carbons in there are connected, and then where this one says, oh, there's an oxygen on it, and this one had two hydrogens on it, we kind of get a Lewis structure that way. So all the hydrogens just get extended into the space, and then all of these carbons are connected, and then there's the extra ones, the double bond oxygen is shown. So sigma bonds, those are single bonds, and pi bonds are double. Now the thing about the sigma bonds is one of the double bonds counts as a sigma. So let's count the sigma bonds. All right, one. Oh, let me get my highlighter out. I've got one, two, three, because one of those is a sigma. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There are thirteen sigma bonds. All right, and that's the sigma symbol. Pi bonds are a little easier. It's just the double. One, uh, one and two. I'll highlight those in those red dots. So my pi bonds, I have two pi bonds, and I'm still in a highlighter mode. Um, so we want to be able to kind of expand those and identify the sigma and pi bonds. Um, the sigma bonds come from single bonds of overlapping molecules. So when we have our uh, tetrahedral arrangement we notice we have a, a carbon atom. If we do its dot structure, it says 1, 2, 3, 4. But that doesn't exactly fit its electron configuration. And remember we said these don't really work anymore. Our electron configuration does not have those four electrons at equal energy. What happens is those guys combine to make four regions of equal energy. Now you don't need to know how or why, but in order to bond they have to spread themselves out and to get four regions I have uh, an S and then three P's all combining to make SP3 orbitals. So S, each one of these now is an SP3. SP3, SP3, SP3. Okay. Now those four electrons are going to fill up four new orbitals that are all singles and they're all ready to bond. So that's what our Lewis structure actually represents. This is our hybrid orbitals. They're sp3s, four regions. This is how we get our tetrahedral shape. One, two, three, four. I have one single electron in all four of them ready for a bond to make a double pair. So my orbitals can combine to make bonding orbitals, and these are hybrids, right? The sp3 is a hybrid orbital. Um, so here we can see our sigma bonds forming an overlap. So I have an sp3 on each CH3 molecule. They're getting ready to make a single bond, and then when those overlap, they make a sigma bond. Um, so this is how single bonds are made. They overlap, and even then, those sp3s no longer exist. They make a, a single bond out of them, but they have to make those sp3 hybrids in order to overlap. Uh, here's an sp2 molecule. sp2s are triangular. Okay, So here again, if I have um, an s orbital, and my p orbitals, 2p, if I only want to make three orbitals instead of four, if I used all four of those, I'd get four. Let's say I only want to use three, then I would make, uh, I'll group them together here, I'd make use the s, the low energy one, and I'd only use two of these high energy ones, 
and I would have um, an sp2 orbitals. I used an s and two p's. And now I can put electrons in those. But interestingly, there is another p orbital here that was not used. So at a higher energy, I do still have a p orbital all by itself. When I'm only using three of those, three of those give me the triangle shape, trigonal planar, uh, and I can put electrons in those ready to bond. When I only use three of those, I still have a p orbital that was not used ready to go. And this is where um, my single bonds, these hybrids, make my sigma bonds. I can make sigmas out of all of those. But my extra unused, and this is often, this one is ready for a pi bond. Pi bonds are the ones that come from the unused p orbitals that are ready to overlap. So here's a pi bond. If this carbon was a, uh, had sp3 hybridized like we just had before, there's two other sigma bonds behind it. And I'll get green here because they made theirs green. Um, if these are the sigma bonds, sp3 hybridized, okay, I'll make another one over here. Just like we showed on that last slide, there's this unused p orbital and they can overlap as well. So that p orbital is going to overlap above and below the plane and that makes my pi bond. The sigma bonds, definitions here, sigma bonds are in the middle between the atoms. The pi bonds are the unused p orbitals above and below, but it's one bond, that's my, it's because it's a p orbital overlapped, above and below the atom, the nucleus. So pi bonding here, just three-dimensional views, pi bonding happens above and below the plane of the atom. Here is that same molecule, ethene. It's got um, these sigma areas here. There's sp2, the hydrogen's an sp2. This is an sp2. And it's got this extra p orbital. And this one has an extra p orbital. So extra p orbitals can overlap. And when they overlap, they're overlapping above and below the molecule. Same view. Um, triple bonds get a little different. Triple bonds, now I need two extra p orbitals. So let's take a look at triple bonds. If I had an s orbital and my p orbitals again, if I only want to make two hybrids for a linear structure, okay, they are going to be used or we're going to use, I'll use blue here because that's what this picture uses, I'm going to use one of the P's and one of the S's. So lower energy, and now these are called SP's because I used one P and one S. I can put electrons in those ready to bond. So there's an electron there and there's an electron there. But I have extra P orbitals that are not bonded yet. So at a higher energy, I have a p orbital ready to go there and a p orbital ready to go there. So these will make single bonds, sigma, in opposite directions, 180 degrees apart. Those are my normal single bonds. And then if I needed a triple bond, these p orbitals are ready to make a double and a triple bond. Those can make my pi bonds. Okay. Uh, this picture shows it really well. They're above and below the act, or um, one of those p orbitals is going above and below and one is going along inside and outside so that they can overlap with another one. So let's take a look at see if we can visualize that. Um, and this is very challenging. So you can see here my green is my sigma bonds. There's 180 degrees apart. The HCCH, HCCH. There's two regions there, SP hybrids. Um, and single bonds, and then my p orbitals go above and below, and then they can overlap, and each p orbital can overlap to make this single bond. What we need to be able to identify here is the hybridization. Um, hybridization is actually not too hard if you've been lost on some of this. I understand. Um, there's only two regions around this carbon. So if we look at all of our orbitals, I'm allowed to make hybrids out of all of these. 
if there's only two regions around this carbon, I'm only going to use two of my orbitals. So th this carbon is sp hybridized. There's only two regions around this one. It is also sp hybridized, because I'm using two of the regions. If we used, let me do another molecule. If we did this one, I need extra H's on it. Okay, now this carbon, let's look at, I can use the hybrids out of all of these. This carbon now has one, two, three regions on it, trigonal planar. It's going to take three of these orbitals to make the hybrids. And S and two P's is going to make SP2. So these carbons are sp2 hybridized because they're trigonal planar. A tetrahedral is four regions is going to use all four sp, p, and p. If I use all four of those, I get sp3 hybridized. So molecules that have three regions of space are sp3 hybridized. Four regions of space. I'm sorry, four regions of space are sp3 hybridized. So just like we did shapes, we can count the the regions around it. And we don't have to necessarily visualize it. Definitions, we need to know how they're happening. Um, but if we can just count the number of regions, we can count how many of the orbitals are being used to make new hybrids. Okay. Uh, so that's what Chapter 9 is all about. Chapter 9, we're only going to do Section 1. It's all about making these hybrids. Um, we take our ground state electrons and we make hybrids out of them. Um, if I use all four of them, I can get four hybrids, sp3. If I use three of them, I can get sp2 hybrids. If I only use two, I can get sp hybrids. And then I'll have unused p orbitals with some of those to make pi bonds.